As always, the first part of the assembly process is measuring oil clearance on our main bearings. Since the undersized bearings are basically brand new, we are going to reuse them. The ARP main bolt kit is torqued to 70 pound feet, just like final assembly. For each journal, we'll set our micrometer to the journal size and use the micrometer to zero out the dial bore gauge. Our clearances come in between 19 and 20 ten thousandths. That sounds a little tight, but it's well within the OE spec. We'll repeat the process for all the rods, which are within stock Chevy specification as well. Next, the camshaft bearings are finally pressed in. The pistons will receive Total Seal's gas-ported top ring set. This gives you all of the benefits of a horizontal gas-ported piston without having to machine the piston itself. Since our dyno mule engine will probably see some abuse, we'll gap the ring a little larger to 22 thousandths on the top ring and 24 thousandths on the second ring. We'll go slowly and check our work often. Not to be overlooked is deburring the ring with a fine India stone after it's been filed. This ensures the ring doesn't damage the piston or the cylinder wall. With everything clean, we'll lube up the bearings and reinstall our rebalanced and polished stock crankshaft. This was done by our favorite machine shop, Shacklet Automotive Machine. Just like before, the final torque value on the four bolt mains is 70 pound feet. It's time to put a cam in our engine, which brings us to why we are doing this entire operation, adjusting dynamic compression ratio. A lot of the times people get hung up on just static compression ratio to determine the octane and fuel they will use, when dynamic compression ratio is just as important as static. It is calculated the same way, but you have to know a couple different things about your engine. One is the connecting rod length, and two, where the intake valve closes in the cycle, and that is directly affected by the camshaft. To calculate dynamic, we have to use something called effective stroke, and that is the amount of stroke left after the intake valve closes. Now, that is a large equation, and if you're good at trigonometry, you can get it figured out, but if you know all of your numbers, you can plug it into a few online resources, and the math will be done for you. When we built our engine in the parking lot, it had a measured static compression ratio of 8.82 to 1 and had a dynamic of 7.27 to 1. Now, with our new parts like our 13cc effective dome, our head gasket size, and our head chamber size, we have a measured static compression ratio of 13.15 to 1. Now, that seems high, but we're going to use camshaft selection to make our dynamic compression ratio pretty manageable. We have two TrickFlow TrackMax hydraulic roller camshafts on the table. One that's a little bit smaller, one that's a little bit bigger. The smaller one has durations at 50 thousandths lift of 230 degrees on the intake and 234 degrees on the exhaust on a 110 degree lobe separation angle. The larger camshaft has durations at 50 thousandths lift of 246 degrees on the intake and 254 degrees on the exhaust on a 112 degree lobe separation angle. Because of our part selection and where we want this engine to make power, we're going to use the smaller of the two camshafts. We also have a Summit Racing billet double row timing set that is adjustable so we can dial in our intake valve center line to where we need it to be to be manageable and also run pump gas on the dyno. 